Deep in the heart of the Smoky Mountains lies a serpent made of asphalt, winding its way through the rugged terrain like a mythical beast. For decades, it has lured daredevil drivers and thrill seekers, testing their skills on its treacherous back of twists and turns. This road is both beautiful and deadly, with a storied past that has shaped its reputation as one of the most challenging and iconic destinations in the world. From its humble beginnings as a simple mountain road to its current status as a mecca for motorsports enthusiasts, the history of this beast is as winding and unpredictable as the road itself. Today, we journey through time, tracing the evolution of this legendary course, its ever-present danger, and why it is a destination for anyone who craves the thrill of the ride. This is The Tale of the Dragon. There's nothing wrong with your video device. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. It's not a racetrack. The speed limit is ridiculously low and traffic flows in both directions. Yet it's considered to be one of the greatest driving roads on earth. It's an 11 mile stretch near the Old Smoky Mountains, right on the border of Tennessee and North Carolina. It's this black river running through dense vegetation, surrounded by myths and rumors, where screaming engines can be heard between the trees at any time of the day and where bits of debris litter the shoulders. Offerings to the forest left by those who were never destined to make it out in one piece. Uh, and they're placed at the base of features with names like Shaw's Grave, Copperhead, and Mud Corner. Officially, it's part of US 129, a federal highway, but it's often more known as the Tale of the Dragon. Every year, millions of people will come from all over the nation to ride or drive the Dragon. It's famous both for being a damn nice stretch of highway and for being dangerous as hell. You are a failure. Nobody loves you. See, at its core, it's just a road through an area known as Deals Gap. It's got two-way traffic, a speed limit, and police patrolling the area looking to hand out tickets. But it feels like so much more. First off, it's beautiful. There's trees, streams, and hills surrounding the 11 mile stretch of road. Second, it's a challenging roller coaster that will test your abilities as a motorist. It may not be as long as the Nürburgring, but it has twice the number of corners. Also, like the ring, if you fail to navigate the narrow road, you might end up in oncoming traffic or in the forest. Successfully conquer the 300 plus corners though, and you'll join the ranks of brave men and women who have tamed the dragon. Engraving your name on a list that goes back more than a century, preserving a legacy of the pursuit of pure driving bliss. Even if you don't go to push your mental limits, the dragon has a ton to offer. At the diner, there will be gearheads congregated from every corner of the US, who would love to tell you tales of their past. Along the side roads and on the turnouts will be cars and motorcycles of every vintage. It's a true pilot's heaven, because anyone there is only there for one reason, to take a machine through the forest and enjoy the journey. And it's been like that for a long time, long enough for there to be legends firmly cementing the passage as a holy ground. Even as far back as the 1700s, and maybe even earlier, rumor has it that even animals knew of the majesty. Now, that may be a bit of a tale, but this is a dragon we're talking about, so I think it's fair game. Before the first European settlers appeared on the East Coast, animals would find their way through the mountain and carve trails in the dirt. Hunters would follow those critters and clear away vegetation, slowly forming a path through the forest. Years go by, and now people in the newly formed state of Tennessee need to get to the Carolinas. So those old animal trails slowly became dirt roads. And in the early 1900s, they start to put down gravel in order to make it easier to move construction equipment around. It officially became a highway in the 1920s, although Tennessee and North Carolina kind of fought over the name until 1934. That's when the entire thing was paved and designated as US 129. 
For a long time, it was just another country road. Something fishermen would take to get to the lake, or occasionally some tourist would get lost on the way to a golf course. Now one guy in 1992, nearly a century after it became an official road, was one such tourist, Doug Snavely. He rode his motorcycle from Atlanta to explore the Smoky Mountains by bike, and fell in absolute love with US-129. Even after being shot at by confused locals, he convinced a cafe owner to let him advertise the place as a motorcycle destination. He began writing newsletters and formed the Deals Gap Writing Society. It's not fair to say that Doug started the Legend of the Dragon. In fact, he only knew about it because the Norton Owners Rally regularly held an, um, unofficial races as far back as the 1981. And those guys are probably the first ones to actually call it the Dragon. But Doug did get the word out. And ever since his first newsletter, the number of people coming to the Dragon has grown exponentially. So he's probably why you want to go there now. And you definitely should. From the moment you get in, you'll know you are where you are meant to be. It's a gearhead paradise, a gathering place for people who breathe petrol, and you'll know you're amongst friends. Every sign is covered in performance part stickers, motorcycle wrecks are left as statuses and warnings, and there's even a tree of shame that is full of pieces collected from the side of the road. And you can't go 10 feet without seeing an art piece encouraging you to go for it. But just make sure you follow the rules. It really is all about the ride, or the drive, but it's also about being safe. Over the last couple of decades, more than 30 people have died trying to conquer the dragon. And with a little bit of smarts, you can definitely avoid being a statistic. So the first thing is stay on your side of the road. Like, just don't cross the yellow line. The point is to ride the road to the best of your abilities. And that means staying in the lanes. Secondly, the speed limit is 30. Now, it used to be higher, but it's not now. Do people obey that speed limit? No, of course not. People brag about completing the run in under 10 minutes. It's literally impossible to complete 11 miles in under 10 minutes at 30 miles per hour. The math just doesn't add up. You can't even do that on a straight road. This thing is a friggin' roller coaster. Now, I'm not going to tell you to break the law though, so I'll leave this up to your own discretion. Just be warned, there are cops, and they will pull you over and find the sh out of you. Plus, you know, every year at least one person dies on average. Unsafe speed is how you push yourself closer to being that one. So, be smart. Use the turnouts to let faster people go by and soak in the scenery. Take breaks if you start to feel fatigued. And most of all, remember to keep the macho in check. This is a place to enjoy a twisting, beautiful road and not set down a new lap time. As far as the future of the dragon, currently rumors run rampant. With every death, or every new posted top time, there's always another wave of mythology. People let their overactive imaginations run wild, and word travels faster now that we have the internet ruining our lives. They'll say that the roads are closing, or adding speed bumps, or changing to a toll road, or that they're just going to completely alter the road. Yet, it is still there waiting for you. The dragon sits in the valley, daring you to approach and find your flow through the 318 curves and 11 miles of manicured blacktop. Because danger is just flavor added to the main course of beauty and legacy that is, Deals Gap US-129 or The Tale of the Dragon.